Hey, it's Steve and welcome back to the shop. Now, hopefully you enjoyed that little flyover I did at the beginning because in this video, I'm gonna look at the IKEA K1 Max Pro Laser. Now that's not to be confused with the Creality K1 Max 3D printer that I reviewed recently. This is a true laser. Now IKEA, if you didn't already know, is the Atom Stack Premier brand. And since I already gave you that flyover, we're gonna look at this laser's capabilities and that'll include a bunch of benchmark testing. And then I'll create a few samples and we'll see what this laser can really do. Okay, before we get too far ahead, let's take a quick look at some of these specs because there's some gems buried in here uh, amongst the typical numbers. Workspace size, yes, it's typical at 410 by 410 millimeters, but look at that maximum speed at 54,000 millimeters a minute. That's not a typo. 900 millimeters a second. This makes this the fastest laser in the market right now. Uh, laser power ha has two modes. There's a 24 watt mode, which is primarily for engraving and a 48 watt mode, which is for cutting, but you can also use that for engraving if you don't care so much about the engraving detail. Uh, and beam size adjusts according to those modes. Uh, you get a smaller beam when you're using the 24 watt, which is why you wanna use it for engraving. Since we're talking about the laser module details, let's take a look. It's a big beefy module. You can see it's a full 48 watt module. It's got an adjustable Z axis, which is very nice and a crosshair of course, and this 24 to 48 watt switch that you can adjust as you need to. Now I won't go through the process of getting the laser connected to the computer. Uh, suffice it to say, all I did was take a USB cable and connect the two together. And then I went back to my computer. I ran light burn with the laser on, of course and said, go find my laser. It discovered it with ease and with a couple mouse clicks, I had it configured and I was navigating using Lightburn. So pretty easy setup. Now you will probably want to turn on a pointer offset. That's the distance between where the laser is and the actual crosshair. Uh, this laser has a crosshair built in. So you can see I set mine to 51 and a half millimeters. And what that is, is uh, the distance between where the laser pointer is and the laser head. So I took a dot and, and just marked a piece of plywood, put the crosshair on it, and then told the laser to cut out a square. And I measured the distance between the lower left corner of the square and the point, and that's how I found it, and I entered that value. So all in all, pretty simple. Now you probably want to turn on the Z axis so you can en enable that option that's on the screen there. Now you can see mine is disabled, and I'll explain that in a bit. Uh, I ran into a few problems with, with autofocus and it's, I just didn't feel like working around it. I, autofocus is one of those things you either love or hate. And in my case, I'm not really a fan. So that, that's what it is. However, if you do enable it and you want to have a, a focus button on Lightburn, you can open the console screen and uh, right click on one of the buttons up, up at the top and configure a macro. So call the button focus or something and then enter ESP 500 in brackets in the macro. And that every time you press that button at that point, it will do a focus. So you can actually make this happen. Uh, again, I will explain why I don't have mine enabled in a bit. Now with the laser configured and ready to go, I, did, I loaded up my usual set of benchmark tests and I started with a cut test, of course, followed by an, an engrave and then a gradient test, uh, my usual gradient test and an image test just to see how things went. Now I did all of these with manual focus and I'll explain that again uh, as, as I go and I'll tell you why I didn't use autofocus. But before I do that, let's take a quick look at the results. Uh, the cut test here with manual focus is great. Uh, you can see as low as 70% power at 700 millimeters a minute, it's still cutting. Uh, the engrave test, uh, now I did the wrong range here initially, this is a 20 watt range. So I re-spun it and did it with the 40 watt range, the one I used for the Xtool S1 and it, it comes out okay. You can see it's a little a little dim down in the 10% range. And if I compare this to, to the test I got with the Xtool S1, uh, you can see the 10% there, it turns on just a bit sooner. Now I'm not too worried about this because you can gain this back with settings if you're doing an image engrave or something. So you can just set the lower range higher than zero and you'll be okay. The gradient test, uh, I ran the, the proper range here all the way from 15,000 up to 35,000 millimeters a minute. And you can see the ideal range there is about 30,000, 30, which is what I used to engrave the dog. That line on the side there is just grain in the wood. But you can see the image looked fantastic. And when I compare it to the S1, uh, you can see by comparison, the S1 looks a little foggy or, or dim. 
by comparison. So really, really great engraving here. The results are, are remarkable. Now keep in mind, I did this all with the 48 watt setting, not the 24 watt setting. So this would only improve when you're down to 24 watts. All right, let's talk about this elephant in the room, this autofocus problem that I ran into. And I initially started my cut test and I did an autofocus and you can see that the result here was less than stellar. It was only able to cut down to about 90% power. And just a, a reminder, I'll bring back the one I did finally where I had a manual focus operation and you can see it's substantially better. And uh, I don't know why this is happening, but I saw this exact same problem on the Acer L2, which also has autofocus and has, uh, in fact, I believe it's the same mechanism for doing this, and it ended up having the same problem where it was out by about four millimeters of focus. Now, fortunately, IKEA included this manual focusing bar, and uh, don't ever lose it because you're gonna need it. Uh, and it's just a simple case of manually turning the focus knob up on top and sliding that bar underneath so that it's a snug fit and you're in focus. It's actually easier than using the autofocus, in my opinion. All right, now just before I get a whole bunch of people upset or have people arguing with me, I'm not saying the autofocus doesn't work. What I'm saying is if you want precision, then do it the manual way, that's all. Uh, the autofocus, if you're just doing kind of routine cutting or routine engraving, it, it will work fine. But if you want precision, always do it yourself. Now the big differentiator for the K1 Max Pro is the speed. So I wanted to push that a bit. I took a piece of scrap acrylic and set the speed to 30,000 millimeters a minute and engraved this lighthouse and you can see it came out well. Then I grabbed a piece of, of scrap plywood and set the speed to 5,400 millimeters a minute. So maximum speed and gave it a shot and look, it looks amazing. Now you do have to set the overscan uh, quite high. I set it to about three, three and a half percent in order to keep the edges of the image from getting ragged, but it, it engraved very quickly. And as you can see, the results turned out great. So as you can see, all in all, the IKEA K1 Max Pro is a fantastic laser. And I think if you had one, you would have no regrets at all. Now, there are a couple of things I wanna call out here as things they've done really well. So the construction is top of the market. Uh, there's nobody who's building a better laser than this. If you look at, at some of the Xtools products, uh, it's on par with some of those. So, so if you think quality, think, you can think of this. Uh, the speed and the power here is excellent. As you saw, I tried a 5,400 millimeter a minute test and the laser actually performed and did it and lots and lots of power. So I, again, I don't think you'll, you'll regret buying it from, from that perspective. Now I do wanna call out the honeycomb on this laser. It's not really part of the laser, but it came with a package that Ikea sent me. This is by far the best honeycomb I've ever seen. And I would recommend this even if you don't have an Ikea laser. It's not really a honeycomb. It's more like a bunch of saw blades standing up on edge but when you put the material down, it stays where it's supposed to. And the way that it's constructed, the, the bottom of it is solid metal. So you can actually lay it down on something and not worry about damaging the surface underneath, underneath the honeycomb. So very good. Now, there are a couple of things I didn't like so much about this laser. I mentioned the autofocus. It's not that it doesn't work. It's just that I really don't understand why this is a feature. Uh, it it's, takes longer to use and it doesn't do as, as good a job as you could do by, by hand. So I really don't understand it. If you're gonna buy this laser, don't buy it solely because it has autofocus because it's not really uh, that exciting of a feature. And Ikea, I'm sorry, but it, it is what it is. Now, my laser also came with an enclosure. And if you're considering buying one of these, these lasers, if you wanna buy that enclosure, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the enclosure. I used it for all of the cutting on this, on this video. And it, it works well as far as keeping smoke out of your shop if you ventilate it directly outside, but it's kind of flimsy and it has the loudest fan I've ever heard in my life on anything, let alone a laser enclosure. And when I say loud, think jet engines. It is insanely loud. So it, it will not be something you enjoy working with on the laser. Last on the list is the price. It's not that the price is insanely high, but it's expensive. This is a high priced laser. It's on par with say the X-Tool S1 from a price perspective. But for that, you're getting a, a lot of value and I don't think it's overpriced, but it's not the kind of money you wanna spend if, you, if this is your very first laser. So 
you know, go, go buy something really cheap to figure out if you're enjoying this as a hobby or maybe you want to start a business and then come back to Ikea and buy this laser because it is a great laser for the money. It's just a lot of money. Anyway, I'll put an affiliate link down below if you do want to buy one of these and I love this laser. So if that means anything to you, you, you definitely might want to consider it. If you use that link, you're helping out the channel. And uh, with that, I'll wind down. So get out there, make your world and hey, I'll see you next time.